With the buys this week, you may actually be stuck streaming at quarterback or tight end. So hopefully this video will be able to help you out. We'll start with the tight ends this week. Tier one, we are actually going Sam Laporta tight end one overall. Now, I have something embarrassing to admit to you. Coming into this season, I was saying, okay, we've learned our lesson. I mean, for years now, we are not drafting rookie tight ends. I don't have a lot of Sam Laporta. I wish I did. Trust me, it's one of our biggest misses of many this season. But nonetheless, if you're looking at what Laporte has done, Laporte is averaging about 14 points per game. This should be a very good offense this week. In the highest scoring game of the week going up against the Chargers, if you're looking at Las Vegas over-unders, this is a game that we want pieces of. And Laporte has a massive chunk of this Detroit Lions offense. So we will go Laporta 1, Mark Andrews 2 inside the same tier. Now the reason we're going to go Andrews below Laporta, I would rather have Andrews rest of season, but just this week, Andrews does have that much tougher matchup going up against the Cleveland Browns. Now both the Ravens and the Browns are pretty good teams, right? But I mean, they are great when it comes to their defensive play, which is why if you're going to look at the over-under of this game, you actually have them at 38 points. I mean, it is shocking to see, but the only game, according to Vegas Sportsbooks, that will be lower scoring than this one will be the Jets and the Raiders. So even if these are two great teams because of their defensive play, we will be a little bit lower. We'll talk about David and Joku later on. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we are going to go TJ Hawkinson at three. Now, this is someone we drafted a lot of. 14 and a half points per game has been phenomenal. Arguably right up there is like the tight end two this season. Now, the issue is obviously the change at quarterback. I understand he was great with Joshua Dobbs this past week. And 100%, I am rooting for Joshua Dobbs. And with the amount of TJ Hawkinson that I have in fantasy drafts, I hope that he continues to crush it. I do want to be realistic. The loss of Cousins is still a very bad thing for this passing offense. Dobbs is a great story, but in reality, if you project this team going forward, you have to be significantly less excited about their offense. And to be honest with you, Dalton Kikade at four is someone that rest of season, I think you can make an argument to have over TJ Hawkinson once we eventually get Justin Jefferson back in Minnesota. Now I'm making these rankings under the assumption that we have no Justin Jefferson this week. Kincaid, obviously dominant with no Dawson Knox here. Going up against Denver should be a game where the Buffalo Bills are at the top of the NFL in points scored. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we're going to go George Kittle at five. If we're looking at Kittle, I very much am worried about the splits with and without Debo Samuel for him over the past three seasons. But with that being said, I mean, L, he's still someone we can't start. He's averaging about 12 points per game. I just think you have to be realistic in that he's not in the same tier as Hawkinson or Kincaid. Then we will go Dalton Schultz at six with Schultz. I actually drafted a lot of him as well. I'm very happy with how that's turned out. Going up against Cincinnati should be one of the higher scoring games in the NFL this week. You have an over-under of 47.5 points, which is only behind the Detroit Lions and Los Angeles Chargers in terms of game environments that we want to be in on. Evan Ingram will be that next guy. With Evan Ingram, I would rather have him over Dalton Schultz rest of the season. The issue is you do have a pretty tough matchup going up against one of the best defenses in the NFL in San Francisco. So we are going to have to be a little bit lower on Evan Ingram than we otherwise would be. And then the last tight end that we are going to have in this tier will be Taysom Hill. Now, if you are playing in a non-PPR format, Taysom Hill will be a top five tight end. I wish I drafted more Taysom Hill. It is what it is. But if we're making this rankings list for a full PPR league, to be fair, Taysom Mills averaged 10.1 points per game, right? He is lower than every other tight end, not named Dalton Kikaid, ahead of him on this list. He does have touchdown upside. Clearly has been getting heavily involved in the red zone, which is why I think we have to go out there and rank him as a top 10 tight ends. I just want to be on record, non-PBR format, Taysom Mill is higher than this. This will be for a full PPR league. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we are going to go Cole Komet Thursday night against Carolina. I mean, you actually have the Chicago Bears favored in this game. Looks like you're not going to have Justin Fields for this week. I mean, you have this game with an over-under of 38 and a half points. You have the Bears favored by about three and a half points in this contest as well. So it's kind of crazy that this is how bad... Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers are. 
Regardless, Komet's been great. It's probably a game that we don't want to be watching tonight. I may just be watching Breaking Bad instead, if I'm going to be honest with you. Well, of course, I'm joking. We'll be live streaming after the game, talk about everything. And if you wanted to check out any of those pickums for the game tonight, you can find that link in the live chat in the description in the comment section. Promo good flock, 100% deposit match, plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers. And on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be getting a Bryce Young special pickup more than less than half a passing yard, which you may not be super excited about knowing it's Bryce Young. But moving on, we will have Jake Ferguson here at 10. With Ferguson, has been great, great offense. My issue is you're going up against the Giants who have an applied team total of like 11 points this week. So what I would be a little bit concerned about is the possibility that this team just shuts down the passing offense in the second half and they just look to run the ball over and over and over again. So that's what I'd be a little bit concerned about here. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we will go Trey McBride at 11. With McBride, I'm assuming that we are going to get Kyler Murray this week. Uh, McBride's only averaged seven points per game, but obviously a lot of that was based off Zach Ertz being in this offense at the beginning of the season. Once we get past the top 10 guys, I want to be on record and saying that all these other players are just kind of toss-ups. It's very hard to know who we are going to go with. I mean, we'll go Kyle Pitts at 12. Kyle Pitts has averaged about eight and a half points per game, which is actually lower than what we've had with David Njoku and Jonu Smith as our next two guys. And to be honest with you, if you really wanted to put Johnny over Kyle Pitts, I'm not going to fault you for it. Now, I'm a monkey. I I'm an idiot. So it will be very difficult for me to go through and for me to make that call right now. I mean, if you are looking at what we've had so far this season with Johnny Smith, obviously a lot of this production came in this past week where he had the longest touchdown of any Atlanta Falcons so far this season. But you are looking at a tight end that's had 42 targets on the year. And in comparison to Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts currently is going to be sitting at 53 targets. So I'm going to go with the guy that's had more target volume, even if he has had fewer fantasy points. And then David Njoku, I'd like more than this rest of season. The issue is very tough matchup going up against Baltimore. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we're going to go K. Dotton coming off the great game, obviously, against Houston. Then we will be going Logan Thomas. Thomas actually averaged more points than any other tight end in this tier so far. Hunter Henry, Luke Musgrave, and Gerald Everett. Maybe you're excited about Gerald Everett because it's a great game environment, as we already mentioned. And on top of that, in the case of Gerald Everett, this is a tight end that is going to see a higher percentage of his team's offense, knowing that we don't have a healthy Joshua Palmer or a healthy Mike Williams here. But in reality, none of these tight ends in the last tier, I think, are super safe. Now, let's head over to the quarterback position, ladies and gentlemen, where we are going to be led off with Josh Allen, where Allen, you can make a, an argument that he's been disappointing from a real-life perspective, that possibly you're disappointed overall of what we've had with the Buffalo Bills. From a fantasy football perspective, it doesn't freaking matter. He's averaging over 24 points per game, the number one quarterback in fantasy. Great matchup going up against the Denver Broncos. You have a ton of passing volume and rushing upside. So you have to be in on Josh Allen. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we are going to go Joe Burrow at two. With Burrow, obviously, if we're looking at the points per game, very skewed. The beginning of the season is going to mess that up when he was injured. But clearly, we've seen over the past two weeks now that Joe Burrow is fully healthy. Not only is Joe Burrow fully healthy, but at the same time, now we have a fully healthy T. Higgins. Really, we only have to be monitoring Jamar Chase. But you actually have the Cincinnati Bengals as seven-point favorites in this game with the highest implied team total of any team in the NFL this week. Now, going over to our next guy, we'll have Justin Herbert at three. And with Herbert, it doesn't really seem believable because you can make an argument that he's been very disappointing as well. Maybe from a real-life perspective, blame it on him, blame it on the charge. doesn't really matter. He's still out there averaging 20 points per game, you know. And in this environment, going up against Detroit, this will be a game where they actually have to go out there and throw the ball. I know he was very disappointing on Monday night, but that was in a tough matchup against the Jets, where at the same time, didn't have to throw it at all. Now, our next guy will be Lamar Jackson at four. With Lamar, he was actually my most invested into player this offseason. If you're looking at the dollar spent in fantasy leagues, I would rather have Lamar rest of season over Justin Herbert. My issue is we are looking at a quarterback going up against the Cleveland Browns, where we know that this is a very, very tough matchup. Now, jumping down to our next tier, Dak Prescott has been on a tear as of late. 
Now, the issue that you're going to have with Dak is going back to the same thing we said with Jake Ferguson. You're 16 point favorites in this game. If you are a 16 point favorite, it is going to be very difficult to go out there and say that you are someone that's going to be throwing the ball in the second half. In reality, it's probably just going to be slow it down and run it for Dallas. Now, CJ Stroud will be that next guy at six. Stroud, phenomenal, looks great. My only hesitation is if you are looking at what Las Vegas sportsbooks are telling us, they're telling us that the Texans here are going to fall back down to earth in a big way. Right now, there are seven-point dogs against the Cincinnati Bengals. If you look at their implied team total, they do look or at least project to be a mid or slightly below average offense this week against Cincinnati. Obviously, this will be a spot, though, where they have to throw the ball over and over and over again. And CJ Stroud has been phenomenal. And Jared Goff will be our last quarterback in this tier. Goff hasn't been great, but I really do like the matchup against the Chargers. I know the Chargers defense looked great, of course, against the Jets. I think that was more of a Zach Wilson thing than the Chargers defense. Now, dropping down, we are going to go with Sam Howell at eight. With Howell, I, I mean, I don't want to put him here, but he is 2023-2019 Jameis Winston, right? It's like you take Jameis from 2019, you put him in 2023, and that's Sam Howell. He's going to have a ridiculous amount of passing volume, passing attempts, where even if he is not a great real-life quarterback, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the fantasy points are going to be there, just video game-type numbers. Like, if you're looking at him scoring 18 and a half points per game so far this season, that's actually ahead of Goff, that's ahead of Dak Prescott, it's ahead of Joe Burrow, and ahead of literally everybody we have ranked behind him. Now, our next tier, we'll have Purdy and Lawrence in this same tier. Lawrence has been very disappointing. Lawrence is averaging about 15 and a half fantasy points per game so far this season. And at the same time, it's a pretty tough matchup going up against the 49ers. So if you wanted to make the argument to go through and just leave Lawrence on the bench this week, I'm going to be completely fine with that. By no means do I view him as someone that you have to start. Now with Brock Purdy, I know that he has fallen down a considerable amount where he does look human now. We're at the beginning of the season, obviously, especially against the Dallas team. Everybody was losing their minds. In reality, I think that Brock Purdy will be much better this week, knowing that we are going to get Debo Samuel back for this offense. Now, Geno Smith has been one of the most disappointing players in fantasy. Like if you're looking at Geno Smith, this was a guy coming into the year where I was saying, well, you know what? Historically speaking, we probably don't want to be betting on a quarterback that did nothing for the first decade of his NFL career and then all of a sudden turned into something in like year, uh, I mean, age 32, 33, regardless of whatever it may have been. But the situation is just so damn good where you have Metcalf, JSN, Lockett, you have Walker, you have Charbonnet. Looks like it doesn't matter. Gino is proving that he's a below average NFL quarterback. But for this matchup in particular, going up against Washington, Las Vegas sportsbooks do have the Seattle Seahawks as a top five offense in the NFL this week. So if you wanted to go through and start them, I mean, you could definitely do so. Now, Kyler Murray will be the next QB going up against Atlanta. With Kyler, has been great in fantasy for his entire NFL career, right? I mean, he's been arguably a top five quarterback in fantasy through his NFL career week in and week out. The issue that I'm going to have with Kyler's first week back in is how much is he going to run the ball? I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we'll find out together. I think that this is someone that has upside. I would probably rather just wait to actually see what happens before we have to start him, though. And then we'll have Russell Wilson at 13. Russ has been a lot better than some of these other guys in fantasy. He's been a lot better than Geno Smith. He's been a lot better than Lawrence as well. My issue is tough matchup going up against Buffalo. I mean, if you really wanted to have him up there like QB 9 through QB 12, I'm not going to argue with you. I just don't think you can be starting Russ over any of the guys in the top eight rankings. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we're going to go Baker Mayfield. Great week this past week. In reality, you are probably going to see a fall off from this offense. I mean, this is going to be essentially a pick em game here playing the Tennessee Titans. And if we're going to be looking at the over-under of this game at the same time, I mean, obviously, neither one of these teams is super exciting. We have an over-under of 38 and a half points. That's the same as the Dallas Giants game, the Raiders, Jets. It's less than the Packers, Steelers. It's right in line with like the Browns, Ravens. It's right in line with the Panthers, Bears. So it should be a very bad, I mean, game environment overall. 
Joshua Dobbs. I mean, if we are going to look at ranking Dobbs, quarterback that has rushing upside, he has the great weaponry in the long term. Short term, though, we are still waiting until we get Justin Jefferson back in. But once we have Jefferson, Addison, and Hawkinson all good to go for Joshua Dobbs, I could easily see him sneaking up there to be a borderline top 12 quarterback from a week-to-week -week perspective based off the matchup. Now, Derek Carr will be that next guy at QB 16. If we're looking at Derek Carr here, this is a quarterback that's been very disappointing. And honestly, why the hell do I even have Derek Carr this high? Derek Carr is averaging about 13 points per game. I mean, is there anything to be excited about? He has no rushing upside. Uh, probably not. We'll go ahead and we'll move him down behind Will Levis. With Levis, I was really hoping that he was going to give us some rushing upside coming in to start in Tennessee. I mean, I'm rooting for the guy. Y'all know I've said that story a million times, but in reality, if you're looking at what we've had so far through the beginning of his NFL career, he really hasn't run the ball at all. And then Gardner Minshew will be that next QB at 18 with Minshew. London game or Europe game, I don't know exactly where it's going to be. Regardless, we know that it is going to bring some randomness here. You actually have an over-under 43 points for this game, which is a little bit surprising. I wonder if it's because it is in Europe. And then Deshaun Watson will be that last quarterback at 19. Deshaun Watson will be much higher than this in our rest of season rankings. But as it stands today... You have the Cleveland Browns with a bottom three implied team total this week. It is a horrendous matchup going up against arguably one of the toughest defenses in the NFL. You have an over under this game from 38 to 38 and a half points, depending on what you look at. And at the same time, the spread on this game is six points favoring Baltimore. So while I like Watson, I just can't start him this week with how good the Ravens have been as of late. But I think that should be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please go down there. Hit that like button, ladies and gentlemen. Subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And of course, if you wanted to check out any of those pickups over on Underdog Fantasy, you can find that link in the description in the comment section. Promo good flock, 100% deposit match, plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers. And on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, a Bryce Young special pick of more than less than half a total yard. So make sure you take advantage. But I think it's all I have for you. Again, thank you so much. Really hope you have a great day. And really hope I get to see you out in the live stream later tonight.